What happens when you get into debt? I'll do what I want. I will punch you clean through that window. And you can't. I don't know where I can't go. Or won't pay it back. I can't pay you. I can't pay you. We meet the High Court enforcement agents who are pushed to their limits. You're a living, living little yellow twat. Dealing with desperate debtors. If you please open the door. Got no one, nowhere to go. In dramatic situations. Get out of here! We meet the people who are losing their homes. We've got nowhere to go. You can't leave him because if that pipe comes off, He's it's life threatening. And their possessions. It would be all right to tear it behind a transit. Because whatever happens, if you can't pay, get your hands off me. They'll take it away. A recent government report reveals the total number of traveller caravans in England has increased by 30% in the last decade. For some councils, the cost of evicting travellers has nearly doubled over the last four years. Paul Bowhill and Steve Pinner are High Court enforcement agents. They travel hundreds of miles each week, collecting debts and repossessing property. Today, they're in Birmingham to carry out an eviction. But this job isn't going to be straightforward. We're about to repossess part of a car park which has been settled on by, allegedly, 28 travellers' caravans. The travellers were moved from the same site more than a year ago. But recently, the community returned. Police will be in attendance. We hope we don't need them. It's not going to be uh, an easy ride. When you go to a traveller's site, you really don't know the reaction you're getting at. It could be volatile. So you have to be very careful. Because of the scale of the eviction, another team of agents are joining Paul and Steve on the case. I wonder how many caravans are going to be here. Stuart McCracken and Elmore Victor. Ah, here we are. The job needs careful planning before the agents go to the site. Can we do this briefing so we can get down there? So they meet in a car park half a mile away. What we'd prefer to do is just to go in quietly, do a walkabout, as we always do. If it all goes wrong, just pull back and we'll wait for reinforcements. Mm. But then, a van pulls up. All right, thank you. What's going on? The possibilities are that we're coming to move you down the road. If no. You, if you want the true answer, yeah. You're going to try and move us? Yeah. No. Well, normal. There's a high court issue, is it? It is, yeah. Right. It started. With the community now aware of the eviction, the agents must get to the site as quickly as possible. That would be it, and the entrance is there on the left, I think, yeah. Where's the police? Not here yet. Everybody could have rallied round together and caused us a huge problem. The more people there are around you, the greater risk of somebody becoming um, aggressive. The travellers are camped illegally on a former government vehicle testing site. What we'll do is just we'll wait just go in and have a chat with them first and see how we get on from there. As soon as Paul and Steve enter the site, the van they encountered earlier pulls up. Morning, sir. What actually is what we're screwing out? What we would like you to do is to get everybody together and move along. We have a high court writ, which... Right. If we one. don't go, what's the option? They're sending a wrecker truck down and they'll drag you off yeah, within the hour. Away from now. There's a lot of kids here. You can't take a lot into you. No, 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 no. We want to do this nicely and together. Do you want us to walk around and knock on the doors or you... It's not up. There's dogs down there. You should get bitten. I'm only, I'm only here to tell you it's right from wrong. All right. There's a few new babies here. What the we dogs need... Go for us. We'll OK. Home. Can you walk I'll around? I'll go around. We're All right. Tell them. Okay. We're have to Listen, now. what's your name? First name. Mr Murphy. Okay. There's dogs in there, they will bite us and it won't be Mr. able to Mr Murphy, we'll wait. 
<clears throat> As a precaution, Steve calls the police to check they're nearby. If they want to drive by, they can drive by and we'll have a chat with them and then can go from there. Should the things take a turn for the worst, we'll call them straight away. Even though Mr Murphy has agreed to tell his fellow travellers they must leave, Paul is duty-bound to make sure the whole community is aware of the High Court writ. Sorry to get you out of bed. It's a High Court eviction notice. Yeah, so we'll leave by when? Midday. Or Monday, yeah? No, today. OK, we'll be out there. Thank you. All right, OK. So far, the travellers seem to be cooperating. We'd like everybody to be gone by 12. But then, the situation suddenly changes. Get out of here! Watch out, guys. Paul. Just a minute, I'll have an opportunity to get a good piece of kit out. It's always a youngster who starts making a fuss. Yeah. Trying to make a name for himself. Watch out, guys. If they did their part and kept it clean... Well, Steve. Ah, oh, eggs. People kept shouting and having a pop. You just have to be aware of everybody around you. And as long as your colleague can keep an eye on you and you can keep your eye on them, you know where you are and how safe you are. Look out for them throwing things on the way past. What was it? Glass bottle. Watch out, guys. As the situation becomes more and more violent... That was a brick. ..the agents will have to think on their feet to keep this unpredictable eviction on track. High Court enforcement agents Paul Bowhill and Steve Pinner were in Birmingham to evict a group of travellers who were camped illegally on a former vehicle testing site. What we would like you to do is to get everybody together and move along. Together with agents Stuart McCracken and Elmore Victor, they had 28 caravans to move. It all seemed to be going well. We'd like everybody to be gone by 12. <laughs> but then the mood changed. Watch out, guys. And the situation turned violent. What was it? Glass bottle. <laughs> now, with the agents still under attack from the children, Steve appeals to the man they spoke to earlier. Mr Murphy, could you do me a big favour? Ask the boys not to do this. Here, Johnny! Because, you know, it's, it's not good. We're trying to do this, you know, as nice as possible. Thank you. As the situation is volatile, the police arrive. Hello, sir. Paul asks them to come onto the site as a precaution. The kids are starting to get arsy now and throwing yeah. stones. The last, yeah. Oh, if you pull in the yard, it would be helpful. We do at all, all costs, and I can't stress this enough. At all costs, we avoid physical uh, confrontation. If the police are there, they do appear to have a calming effect, and we'll carry on with eviction. With the police on site, the atmosphere calms down, and some of the caravans begin to leave. Is everybody okay? Yeah, 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 yeah. Everything's fine. All right, if there's any trouble, will you come and stand by me? Of course, I'll pile it up. They are going peacefully, except for the kids. It's always the kids, isn't it? Are all the other vans going to go, do you know? Yeah, but there's not enough coal bars. So no, 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 that's OK, that's OK. I just didn't know, didn't know if there was going to be any left, that was all. No, no, there's no one, but there's no enough coal bars. OK. We're just going to have to go and come back to the morning. OK, brilliant, thank you. The travellers are towing their caravans to another site nearby. If it's another illegal site, then we've got another issue, haven't we? Means we'll have to go and see them again in three weeks' time when we get another possession order. <sighs> Jesus. 
but tensions are still running high. Oh, oh. Oh, leaving all them poor people homeless, does it? See you later, guys. Oh, for God's sake, leave all the poor old people alone around the road. Why do you have your hooks anyway? High forgeman as well, you high jackass. Yes, many boomer. Finally, the last of the travellers leave. So I've quit look now. With everyone gone, Stuart and Vic take a look around the site. Oh, God, that's vile. And they're in for a shock. It smells of urine. Friggin' hell. It stinks. All the windows have been smashed. But this is the problem. This is what they leave behind. One big mess. It's washed down here. That's where they've been dumping all the rubbish from, like, tarmacking and trees and, you know, all the general rubbish from work. Look at the devastation that they leave behind. It's going to cost thousands and thousands and thousands to put this right. The eviction is complete. There's been a bit of uproar, which there always is, because people aren't happy about being moved. They want to live here for the rest of their lives. It's the same thing, isn't it? Yeah. You're asking people to leave what they consider their home. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. With the site cleared, the two teams can go their separate ways. See you later, guys. Take care, Take lads. Easy. Take care, Have okay. a good At the start of last year, small businesses accounted for over 99% of all private sector enterprises in the UK. But after five years, the majority of small and medium-sized companies are no longer in business. Central London. High Court Enforcement Agents Brian O'Shaughnessy and Delroy Anglin are on their way to Hatton Garden, a district famous for its jewellery shops. This is the diamond quarter, though, and you can see we'll do diamonds now, right now. We're going to a company called Bedazzle in Greville Street. Yeah. You see one in November. Yeah. Come on, let's go. Company Bedazzle owes over £6,000 to a customer who claims she was sold faulty jewellery. But it looks like the business is no longer trading. Dell asks a neighbouring jewellers for any information about the company. Hello, sir. Hi. Wonder if you can help me. Um, the other shop next door to you. Yeah. Was it open at all today? Has it been open? No, it's closed. Like next shop is closed for almost three months. It's been closed three months. Yeah, more than three. Months. Really? Thank you very much. An enforcement letter has already been sent to another address for the company. Brian calls to confirm the details. Hello, what if you can help me? I'm trying to locate your store. Can you tell me where it is, please? Yes, of course. It's number 18, Hatton Garden. We're in the Wonder Gallery. More or less in the centre of Hatton Garden. Thank you very much. No problem. Bye. OK, there's Hatton Garden. Let's go. Was it 18? Yeah. The agents are in luck. The new premises are just around the corner. Here we go, the one that got Ah, oh, well, it's not too bad then. Bedazzle shares the mall with several other jewellers. Now the agents must find company director Charles Abrahams. Looking for the manager. manager. Hello. How are you? My name's Brian O'Shaughnessy. I'm a High Court Enforcement agent. Were you located around the corner before? Mm, yeah, of course I can. Absolutely. This will be interesting. My name is Brian O'Shaughnessy. I'm here on behalf of the High Court. We've got a High Court writ for one of your ex-customers or customer. OK, she's taken that High Court writ against you, sir. Well, bedazzle. And we're here to... ...is the trading name of my company. She misfired it. That be as it may, sir. This is good enough for me, because bad bedazzle is a trading name of your company. So this is what we're going to be using, OK? Now, we're here that's, to... That's Hear me out. Hear me out. Um, you can have your say in a moment. 
Now, I'm here to collect £6,410.82. Right, that's what the High Court writ says. OK? What, what, what are you expecting and what do you need from me today? Well, what I'm looking for you today is to pay this amount, sir. It's gone to the High Court. The company um, doesn't have the well, so, to do with that. Well, what do you really want? If that's the case, sir, well, right, to, uh, well, to save any headache, I'll let me tell you but, but that the... I haven't been given an opportunity. Quite I'm not being intimidated. I just want to get under. I'm, I'm just trying to respond, and you're not even giving me the opportunity. You've asked me a question. Do you want me to answer it? Okay, go ahead. You've asked me what will happen if you can't arrange the funds. Yes. What will happen, sir? The amount then that, that will be requested, it'd be seven thousand four hundred eleven pounds and sixty-two pence, and we'd remove goods to cover that amount. Okay. Well, you can't because this is a different company. Well, then we would the, say the then... Problem, the problem we've got here... Yeah, right? but this is a different company. That doesn't even relate to that. It was formed on the 18th of June. OK, well, the, well, the, the rich has bedazzled. So, we, so as yeah, far as we... We'll, we'll happily continue. Yeah, we'll, 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 we'll continue. We'll, we'll, the rich may say bedazzled. Mm -hmm. Bedazzled diamonds. Limited. OK. Well, I'm sure your customers aren't aware of that when they purchase something from you. Mr. Abrahams claims that the business operating from his new premises is a new company, Bedazzle Diamonds Limited, and that this new company is not liable for the debt. I'll tell you what, sir, it really is up to you, right? We do not get involved in any disputes, OK? If you don't want to pay this amount, fine. We will take goods to recover the higher amount, and you can have your day in court We've got to listen. Hear me. Will you listen, yes, will you listen to me? Will you listen to me? Will you listen to me, please? Yes. All right? We know our job, right? I don't tell you how to do yours. I don't know about diamonds. I really don't, right? This is my job. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you what we will do. Do I have the right to call my solicitor? You can call okay. whoever you like, sir. Absolutely. Right, While Mr. Abrahams calls his solicitor, Brian takes a look around the premises. If any of the valuable stock on site belongs to the company trading as Bedazzle, they could be taken away to offset the debt. When dealing with the jewellers, it's, um, it's happy days. They don't want their jewellery going. If we chose to take control of any goods or assets, we could fit them in our pocket. It's that simple. I've got bailiffs in my shop, in the trap staying there, um, unless I give them the money, He's going to say goods from my shop. Can I pass him over to you? So, yeah, one second. You should like to talk to him. Hello. Hello. Good afternoon. The solicitor reiterates Mr. Abraham's claim that Bedazzle Diamonds Limited is a new company formed after the court action began and therefore not liable for the debt. So you're saying that there wasn't a company at all called Bedazzle in 2012. Is that what we're saying? Yeah. OK. All right. That's what you're saying. All right. We have a High Court writ here, OK? Um, the debtor is Bedazzle. That's what we have on the paperwork. Bedazzle. Just Bedazzle. Dell is confident that the agents have the right to continue. Just, just, look, look, I'm not going to have this argument with you. You've asked me a question, I'm answering it, all right? The name of the debtor on my paperwork is Bedazzle, OK? He's confirmed that they've moved from the address at Greville Street to here. Based on that today, I will be proceeding with the instructions on the High Court writ. If he doesn't want to pay this amount, that's his right not to, but it won't stop me removing goods to cover the amount of the debt. Thank you very much. She seems to think there wasn't a company called Bedazzle prior to the incorporation of this one in 2015. Well, I beg to differ because around the corner there's a shop that says Bedazzle on it. Mr. Abrahams decides to tell the agents more about the debt. It's, it's so unfair. It is so unfair. This, this lady, she was absolutely your worst nightmare. Nightmare scenario customer. He over. Backwards. Mm. What was it about? What was it for? The customer bought an engagement ring in the wedding band and she was upset that the diamonds repeatedly fell out. Numerous times we tried to repair this. I'm a good, honest guy. Absolutely. 
And we at, 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 the, at the sidebar, we just said, enough is enough. We can't deal with this anymore. Can't keep doing it. So then she put in the county court judgment against us. We didn't get a chance to respond. And we put a cover there in court. She got to keep all the bands. And I have to pay all this money on top of that. That which, I, is, I, which, I, is, which is which is which is why yes. you should have your day in court, sir. Because so we, we are you telling me now that I will have an opportunity. Yes, to yes, in yes, court. yes. I often find myself advising debtors about getting a case set aside. Once you make them aware that the money doesn't go directly to the claimant and they got 14 days, you've sweetened that pill a little bit enough for them to pay it, so they can get their solicitor onto the case and get the day in court. Where do I ride the One moment, I'll get off you now. Knowing he can appeal, Mr. Abrahams decides to pay the £6,400. Thank you very much. Charles, I know it's been difficult for you, but we appreciate your hospitality. Yeah. No worries. All right, Charles, good luck. Good day's result. It's done. Paid. But I think it's just been a thorn in his side, you know, it's just been a pain in the arse room. He's now got the choice to set it aside, go to court, he's got 14 days to do so. Um, but I've got a feeling he's not going to do that. He's probably going to weigh up how much more it's going to cost him, and he runs the risk that he could lose. It's unfortunate, but it's, uh, he's brought it on himself, he should have dealt with it. Brian and Dell have got the debt paid. But on Paul and Steve's next case, they find themselves in the crossfire. I hope your kids get treated like this. Of a bitter tenant dispute. You gave him an agreement. You know you did. The number of households renting in the private sector is set to rise by 1.1 million by 2021. But this increase in the rental market has been met with a surge in evictions, reaching a record high last year. High Court enforcement agents Paul Bowhill and Steve Pinner are in Sunbury on Thames, Surrey, to carry out another eviction. The area is a really, really nice area. The river's on the right here. It is. That big wet thing there, see it? The landlord claims the tenant, Paul Jones, owes over £4,000 in unpaid rent. It's just here. The flat is above a shop owned by the landlord, Palmer Argyla. The landlord claims he's been trying to get Mr Jones out for months, but the agents aren't here to collect the arrears. Their job is to get the tenant out, today. But this eviction isn't going to be straightforward. Somebody coming to the door at last. Good afternoon. Paul? Hello Paul? No, I'm not, I'm Aaron. Is Paul about? Uh, no, not the minute, no. OK. This is for Paul. Can you tell him we're here to repossess the property? Sir? He's can not you here at the minute. Well, can you ring him and tell him, if I, you would? I don't have any credit or anything. Well, he needs to know that we're actually here to repossess the property. OK. So, do you have a number and I'll call him? Is he local? Um, I don't know where he is, to be honest. Do you live here as well? Uh, partly, yeah. I sort of rent the room. That's going to end as well. Yeah, I'll get with that. All right. Look, I'll see Mrs. Sure. I'll get her to call him. It appears that Paul Jones isn't the only person living at the flat. I'm in a onesie. Would you like to go and get dressed, then? Because you need to put your clothes on. So a play on words? <laughs> We're in a onesie, because it's one o'clock. It's not a quarter of onesie. Yeah. Can I come in now and have a chat with you?
but as soon as they go inside, Paul and Steve are in for a surprise. I'm Paul Jones. Oh, my landlord's been lying. I'm sorry, but he's gone no, to the High Court. No, my landlord has been lying. Where's my letter from the High Court? That gentleman there's got it. My rent's been paid. OK. Mr Jones claims that he took out the tenancy for the three-bedroom flat 12 months ago. He let out a room to his friend Aaron, but fell behind with the rent after giving up work due to ill health. I'm on sickness benefit. OK, OK, OK. I've just got out of hospital, I've two heart attacks. Oh. OK, I've come out of ACU, I've got all the letters here. Did you go to the county court? Did I? Yeah. No, because I was in hospital. It soon becomes clear that there's a long-running dispute between the tenant and the landlord, Palmer. I have the, the lease for the whole property. OK. Three bedroom. He has sublet a double room to a Polish couple who have applied their own lock and have their own tenancy with Palmer. Mr Jones claims that because his sickness benefits didn't cover the full rent, the landlord sublet the flat six months ago to make up the shortfall. He says the rent is now shared between him and the new subtenants. They paid £500 a month directly to him since May, so there are no arrears. But the writ doesn't say anything about a separate tenancy agreement. Have you got a contact number for the Polish people? No, because he did it. The landlord did it separately. It's clear that there's more to this case than the agents expected. Paul calls the office for more information. Hello, Paul. Yeah, I've spoken to me uh, clients and uh, they're, they're not aware of any subtenants, uh, tenancies, anything going on. And they'd like, uh, they wish everybody to remove from the property that might be there. OK, yes, yeah. so, thanks for that. All right. Cheers. Cheers Bye. There's an interesting quirk on this, is the landlord is not aware of the tenants upstairs. Oh, not aware of the tenants the upstairs. Mm. He is, like, and the, evic and the eviction order is for the whole property, oh, including them. Sorry, sorry. Sorry, no, I'm, I'm, I'm not only reporting what the officer said. He's got. But he, he has got a personal thingy with these Pajani people because we said about getting them out, and they said, no, no, Despite the dispute with the landlord, Mr Jones and his flatmates must leave today. What is going to happen is that we will give you an hour to get your personal effects together. To go where? To go to the council. To go to the council? Yes. And how am I going to get there? I don't know. I'm agoraphobic. Do you want all my doctor's notes? All I, I know... even leave the property? All I know is that I have to have this property empty. He's lying. No. I have no we involvement with that. Me 24 hours. We can't. We can't. What we do, you don't have to take everything, you just need enough stuff. But I've got nowhere to go. You go straight to the council. I've got no family. No, my family are dead. I've got no friends. You have to go straight to the council. Your name is on here. I don't know where I'm going to go, Sal. The eviction is going nowhere. But then the landlord arrives and Paul heads downstairs to hear his side of the story. There's a background to this, obviously. How okay. long have they been here? Uh, one, uh, one year. They have they moved in. The They're behind with the rent. They're not giving rent on time. They never did. On the person, they were, um, just... He said he's been in hospital, missed the court case, had a heart attack. He's been lying a lot of time. Every time I go there, and he used to just tell me stories that are... I've got heart condition, don't shout at me, don't do this. I said, all I want is my rent. All right. It's just that if you're with us now, okay. we can get the lock changed, which is one fine, thing. Yeah. We can clarify the situation and get them moving a little bit faster. That's OK. Thank That's you. fine. Thank you very much. Are you ready to go? Yeah, but what's he said? He just said, well, that's... The landlord's here. Where? Here, outside. Sorry. Be nice. Palmer, why have you lied and you said that they've not paid any money? Well, I, you're not paying, they're not paying your people, no, you're not paying anything. So I'm, I'm paying. paying. It's your people, that's so why are you telling me? It's not my people. They're your people. Let's have a look at your tenancy agreement with them then. The tenancy agreement you gave to them? What? I haven't given nobody. You it's haven't? Not. The landlord denies that he has a separate agreement with the Polish couple, 
and claims that Mr Jones is still responsible for paying the full rent. You got the only tenancy agreement. Yeah. You haven't given them the tenancy agreement at all. It's your people. No, 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 it's not my people. Yeah. Don't lie. Time is running out for Mr Jones. But then, one of the Polish flatmates returns. Camille, what? He's what? saying you've not paid him nothing because he's got you've got no tenancy agreement. No worry, about him. No, but what I'm saying is he's lying though. No. I'm not scared, man. I'm not scared. Please. What what please? What what you what you want? Just the tenancy that he gave to you. No, why not? You've paid him money there that he is denying you paid. Whatever, man. That's not gonna help you anyway. Please, Camille, I'm begging you. Just do what you need to do. Don't speak to me. The more we talk to the tenant and we find out their background and this and how the stories evolve, and then you can understand their situation. And you do, you do feel sorry for some of them. Please, Palmer, you've got a family. Please, I oh, thank you. Why can you not even look at me? The tenants have had nearly an hour extra to pack up and leave, but Mr Jones is still reluctant to go. You gave him an agreement. You gave him an agreement. You know you did. I'm sorry, Paul. We need to be gone. Yeah, well, I'm not being funny. I want that tenancy agreement. I hope your kids, yeah, get treated like this. Whatever the rights and wrongs of the case, Paul and Steve are duty bound to enforce the writ, and all the tenants must leave. Okay, Paul, we gotta go now. You understand the rain? I'm trying to find a dry bit. There's a dry bit here. Finally, Mr. Jones and his dog leave. Take care. I really mean that. You got my number. Yeah. Take care. Thank you. Yeah. <clears throat> he is now homeless. I actually don't know what to do. I'm actually scared because I've got nowhere to go. I've got no family. Mum and dad, sister are dead. Got no one, nowhere to go. So that's it. On the streets. Somebody was lying there, either the landlord wasn't giving us the whole story, or the tenant was lying. We can only take things on face value, can't we? Yeah. Nearly 60% of businesses in the UK have some sort of debt, and the amount owed is on the rise. In the last five years, business debt has risen by 25%, and it's forcing many companies to close their doors altogether. <laughs> 6 p.m. High Court enforcement agents Brian O'Shaughnessy and Delroy Anglin are in West Sussex. What have we got now, Del? You're about to see Mr. Stuart Marler. They have a High Court writ to recover a debt of more than £3,000, owed by a small website company, Retriever Web Solutions, to one of their customers. What have we got here? Where is it? What numbers are we at? I can't see that. One, two, seven. The company is owned by Stuart Marler. Brian and Dell have visited his house on three previous occasions, but he's never been in. Should you go and give him a nice little visit again? I think that would be very nice. As he's not expecting us. Knock, knock, your date is here. Mr. Marler has recently contacted the office, claiming he has no means to pay. He's fogged us off a bit, hasn't he? Well, as usual, he doesn't want to pay his debts. No. This time, Brian and Dell need to serve him the writ face to face and resolve the case once and for all. Yeah, there you go. Lights on. Lovely. Waiting for me. Right. Hi, Mr. Marler. Hello. How are you doing? Hi. Mr. Anglin, okay. High Court Enforcement. We've got a High Court writ. Mm -hmm. We need to see your circumstances mm -hmm. so I can put this to bed and see what we're mm -hmm. doing with it. Okay. 
Right, so what do you want? I need to come in and see your circumstances. OK, yeah. Thank you very much. What is this about? I, I, I know um, you... Basically, it's a website that we agreed to build for the guy. They never gave us any information. And then all of a sudden, he just said, you know, you're not doing it for what, how we want it. The company was in trouble. We couldn't afford anything. So we rented out the house and went to uh, basically live in Spain. So we literally just moved back Sunday night. OK. So the company now is being closed down. Mr Marler thought the debt would disappear when the company folded. But Dell has some bad news. If it was just the company, you might have had an argument, but um, you can see that your name's on there, along with the company. So because you've named on it, we have to have a look at what assets you have. OK. We've basically got nothing, really. So, no? Um, Do you have vehicles or anything? No. If people are in debt, it's not a positive thing for people, but it's how people choose to deal with debt. And, you know, you've got to plough through it. Don't bury your head. Yes. Mr Marler claims he has no assets of value, but Dell needs proof. This is our main bedroom. So we've got no wardrobes or anything. <laughs> um, literally just come back with what we got. All right. What are you doing for money at the moment? Um, well, the Retrieve Web Solutions shut down. Yeah. We've got to start up again. Same thing, because that's what we know. Yeah, starting um, up again, aren't you? We basically couldn't afford to go bankrupt. There appears to be nothing worth seizing in the house. Then, Dell spots something in the bedroom. How was the computer? Uh, about nine months. Okay. Nothing like this. Okay. That's about a four year old laptop. The computers are the only items of any value. But without them, Stuart may struggle to make a success of his new IT business. How do you work with web design? What would you use to do it? Um, we don't... Well, we do web design by using templates. So we get... We buy in a template for 40, 50 quid. Um, so how do you do that? What do you use to do all that stuff? Just a computer. It's upstairs, a computer. Yeah. It's about nine months old. Stuart is facing a crisis. If he can't make a payment today, he could lose what few assets he has. And the clock is ticking. Brian O'Shaughnessy and Del Anglin were in West Sussex to collect a debt of over £3,000 owed by a small website company to one of their customers. The debtor, Stuart Marler, claimed he had no assets and couldn't pay. So we've got no wardrobes or anything. But Dell spotted some computers he could seize to pay the debt. How old's the computer? About nine months. Now Stuart must try and raise some funds, or he stands to lose his computer equipment and his chance to rebuild his company. Stuart's wife arrives. Hello. 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 So... You are? Uh, so you're, OK. Let me explain what your position is. Unless we come to some arrangement in relation to the outstanding debt here, we will be calling a van to remove goods of value. I don't want to disrupt your business that you're bringing up, but I will take the computer and all computers in the house. I don't want to do that. But you need to understand that I will. We haven't got nearly £4,000 available. If you're getting your business up and running again, does it suit you for me to take your computer and remove your goods and we'll be here all night? But that's what I'll do. Racking up the pressure at certain points when enforcing a high court writ is imperative. It's to show your intention and it's to make debtors understand the severity of what's in front of them. We don't take any pleasure in upsetting anybody, but they need to work with us. We, uh, and it, it, this, you know, can we come up to an agreement of some type? No way in our family's got any money. I mean, if we can come to an agreement to 
to pay something back each month or something like that. We just we haven't got. Well, in order for account. right, okay, in order for me to even think about that, I would need a significant deposit or a significant payment. What would you consider a significant payment? It's got to be at least half. Can you find half of it? Wait, no, we haven't got the money. Okay, let's. I'll call the. I'll call the vehicle in. Right, let me do that outside chat with Becca. In so doing, if we do decide to remove, the fee's going to go up because we've got to pay for the removal van, so the, the new balance will jump up by so a significant amount. You're going to start taking our stuff now. Yeah. But it's better than finding four thousand, isn't it? Yeah, it might as well be four thousand. You must have somebody that can help you. We can't. We haven't. We haven't. Our family's broke. We haven't got money in our family. If the couple can't come up with an offer soon, they stand to lose what little they have. The only thing I can try and ask is, do you think Barrett then just kind of... we could do is ask him. We're happy to wait while you do so, it's no problem. Yeah, and he run, he's like 79, 80. This is entirely up to you who, who you ask. Know, but he won't be able to pay the money now. Why? Because he wouldn't have internet banking or phone banking or anything like that. Debit card? Um, you don't know who you speak to. It just cost one budget at a time. While Stuart speaks to his uncle Barry, Dell wants to find out more from his wife about the couple's move to Spain. Why did you come back? Was he not working out there at the business? Um, yeah, we were homesick. Oh. We thought we were trying to, we moved out there because we needed to get things back on track. Mm -hmm. And we felt that now that we're starting to get things back on track, it would enable us to move back. They buried their head in the sand for such a long time that they think that the problems are going to disappear. And when someone like me arrives, they're actually made to face the issues that they've been avoiding for months or years. And in a funny sort of way, it brings them a little bit of relief because they, they can unburden it all. Minutes later, Stuart has some news. Yeah, money. Well done. Are we talking the full amount, yeah? Yeah. Excellent. At least this will be off your back, so you don't need to cry anymore. Your husband's come good. The gentleman's coming around here now to make payment. Uh, and then we'll be on our way. He's a 79-year-old man, so we need to be conscious of him and if there's any issues with him, but he's been really nice by the sounds of it and he wants to help them out. So, uh, times of need, you know who your friends are. 20 minutes later, Stuart's Uncle Barry arrives. How you doing? Hello, What's man. going on? Thank you for your help, sir. You can't run away from a debt and it eventually catches up with you. Have you got your car, please, sir? Thank you. There's many, many things that, that create people's debt or situations, but we're not there to judge. We're there to resolve it in the right way. There you go, all done. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, Stuart. Thank you for your help. All right. Bye. Good luck. Thanks. Thanks. Okay. With the debt paid in full, Stuart's new business is safe. Wednesday at 9, the Hotel Inspector returns here on Channel 5. For next tonight, cockroaches overcrowding homes that are just not habitable in new nightmare tenant slum landlords. Over on Five Star, it's not filthy chat, it's fact-filling. Get to the truth in new sex pod. While on Five USA, double drama from the ever-powerful Law & Order Special Victims Unit.